before we um, look at the stress results, we need to calculate the loads that we've created. We actually need to do the calculations. There's a couple of ways to do this. Up on this top, top bar here, this icon that looks like a calculator, that is calculate all stress loads. And that's the easiest way to do it. However, as the number of loads grow, as you do all strings, you could end up with 100, 200 loads. You wouldn't want to calculate all of them all of the time when you make small changes for sensitivities, etc. So what we can do is this 16 inches is what we were playing with before. Um, so we could calculate a single selected load like this, and we could calculate the string. It calculates both loads here. Um, or we could click the calculate all loads button um, here or here. What I'm gonna do is select the string that we actually do have a lot of loads built on, and then I'm just gonna calculate um, all the loads. So we've got 51 loads, and that was only looking at two or, two or three strings. Let's see how quickly they can build up. But even with 51 loads, it shouldn't take more than 10 seconds, 15 seconds to do everything that it needs to do. And after this, we then can cl click into the stress results and analyze the loads that um, we've created. Okay, so once my calculations are finished, this ball will stay lit green for a few seconds, two or three seconds, just to let the user know that all the loads were calculated to give them a visual representation of that. And then we can come across to the stress results. So I mentioned earlier that we had a written English summary um, of our stress result, of the loads that we're putting onto the string um, and then the results we're gonna look at. So this string here is a nine and seven eight inch drill and production liner that we selected. And then in written English, we've got our load name here, we've got our internal pressure, what the external pressure is made up of, um, and then what the temperature is. So we don't have undisturbed temp for all of the temperatures. We've got a relatable temperature profile that's created in thermoanalysis, such as acid injection, well kill end, production max, et cetera, with a description of what's going on here. Next, we've come across the safety factors, and this is where we actually get to see the results in question. So under safety factors, we begin with well bore summary, and this will give you a summary of all of the strings which have any loads assigned to them. So at the moment, we created those 16-inch fake loads, we could call them earlier, on that um, intermediate liner. And this is the display here. But for the, the loads that we've actually done our analysis on, which is a 9 and 7 inch production liner, the tieback, in the tube and we can have a quick look at the results so red means numbers are below the design factors that we have assigned in case and design here um but a lot of them are still above one but this one here such as 0 0.71 uh, we know we're in trouble there so what this table shows is what is the lowest safety factor in each failure mechanism? So the failure mechanisms are burst, collapse, tension, compression, or triaxial. So what is the lowest safety factor, the minimum safety factor for each string? So when you've got your 10 strings, your eight strings down the side here, and this table's full, it's a very easy way to quick check where the problems exist, and what we then you can see what you can do to fix those problems. If we go to minima all loads, we then get to select the string. We'll stay with this nine and seven eighths inch um, liner. We get details of every single load. So for each load case, we now have what the safety factor is or the minimum safety factor at any point along that string. And what the failure mechanism is in burst, collapse, tension, compression, triaxial again. So for instance, load number four, the screen out load, the pipe safety factor 1.05, and this occurs of this lowest safety factor occurs at this depth. What I love about this table is that we can just right click um, copy table as image or copy table as text, but copy table as image and just paste it into a presentation. And there I know straight away, does my nine and seven eighths inch drill and production line I design. Um, this is above one. So you, you, we could argue that it is acceptable. Triaxial 1.09, well maybe it's gonna struggle to pass anything um, here. And these numbers are well below one um, in collapse. So then we'd have to have a look and see what we can do about this. Do we have to increase the, the strength of the pipe? Do we uh, change the grade, etc.? Because we had reliability based design selected in case and design, we actually have this reliability tab active. 
And what this reliability tab does, it gives us a failure rate or a probability of failure. So each of the loads that is failing the design factor in each failure mode, so this screen out load um, here is failing in both triaxial and burst, it then gives us a failure rate. So with this 1.22 triaxial safety factor, the failure rate is um, one in a billion. Um, so that's pretty much acceptable. Um, but it is still a corporate decision whether that's acceptable. In my mind as an engineer, that's acceptable, but I'm not the one paying for the wells. So the people who are in charge of paying for these wells have to make that, do the consequence analysis and see if these failure rates are acceptable. In burst with a 1.03 safety factor, we've got a chance of 175, one in 175 million. If this load takes place, will fail. So even though we've got the safety factor well below what our design factor is, some people might be able to justify um, that this is completely acceptable. We could go ahead and drill a well, or at least run this string. For these collapse loads down here, you see our failure rates are um, a little lower, 1 in 61, 1 in 249, 1 in 246. Um, these don't seem great. The user will have to go through and do a consequence analysis as in what would happen if we did collapse during this load what would be the consequence of that i have seen situations where people could pass this even a failure rate of one in 20. Um, the chance of that load occurring is very low and then the consequence of that load let's say we have some sort of deep set liner collapse below salt the consequence isn't great and there's a chance that the well could still be drilled at such a low safety factor and such a low failure rate the source data um, for the pipe strength in question comes from ISO 10400, um, but the user also does have an option to create their own custom where we can select the distribution, um, deterministic, normal, exponential, triangular, not what, log normal in WEI bull, and then select the parameters, anything in white we can edit, and then take their distribution into the software um, and see if it works with the actual pipe that that company is going to receive. Okay. The other two tabs here are just further information on each string and each load. Uh, for instance, if we go to that screen out load here, we can now look at each section. What is the lowest pipe body, body, body value for safety factor in all of the different failure types? And then we could also look at all data for a single load. We look at the screen out load again. You can select this here and it'll display what my safety factor is here on the graph. I can right click and I can copy this image out. Um, you can press, uh, we can't display two different loads that are based on slightly different parameters. Um, but if there was a collapse safety factor here as well, at some point you could display it burst and collapse safety factors on a single diagram here. So the design envelope, um, more commonly known as the VME plot, or the VME ellipse, we can see it here. Um, and this is for section two of the string. We could also look at section one. The reason we can hardly see the points, um, all, all of the points are just tiny is because this um, is for it looks like the liner hanger here it's a, a very small section like 30 feet so this must be some sort of liner hanger i could check down here nine seven eight it's, uh, it's the where are we sorry nine and seven eight, it's yes it's this tiny little crossover bit up here so that's why we can't see them so we look at two and then we can see um what loads are giving us trouble um up here so you've got this one that relates over um to here and then down here, we're, we're just pushing out the ellipse. So we need to look at these in, in detail and see what was going on. We can quickly do a check about what would happen if we had, say, a corrosion rate, well, 10% corrosion over a period of time, change this remaining body wall down to 90, and then it shows us this ellipse for the 90%, which is a good quick check um, to see if we could take any sort of um, wall loss and still use the well design. We can select the display options here and make some changes to our design limit plots. Um, if we wanted to take a few of the loads out for whatever reason, if we just wanted to look at 
say these five or six APB loads here. And I could click up and remove all of these loads. I'll keep the initial condition in there and um, click save. And now I've just got my APB loads here, um, which are obviously in the collapse region because it's pressure external pushing inwards. And we can just look at this, but we can fiddle with the diagrams as we see fit. So I normally look at things in real axial force, and that's what most people do, um, versus differential pressure. But then some people prefer to look at effective axial force, and that option is also available here. The last two tabs that we have here under stress results are a plethora of information that the user might want to use at some date in the future. So we've got forces and pressures here, so we can look at effective axial force and say relax your force. I selected both columns here just by pressing control and then showing both columns. And because we have the same units here, we can actually display two on the same graph. We could also look at external pressure against internal pressure and then also have a net burst load or net collapse load. And um, still right click copy image out here. Additionally, we can right click on the table here go to column settings and there's a bunch of other options that we haven't ticked yet. So we might want to show the air weight and the body weight of the case and maybe it's the internal external density, for instance. Now we can scroll along I've just activated these and I can look at them in here. We've got a length change summary, whether that length change is due to hooky and thermal balloon and a buckling, and then a total length change summary. But if this um, pipe is constricted at both ends, then we're going to have no length change. But it's still going to build up stress. And then we've got some length changes here that we can look at in a graphical format. And finally, we have the packet envelope. I've got no details here because I don't have the packet envelope details. That I, I don't recall that I do. Um, but if we had selected that when we had the packet option all the way back in case and design and the case and program for the packet here, if we'd set a packet operating envelope, then what we could do, when we're looking at the stress results, we can come into the packet envelope and see our plot here that shows us whether the pack has um, suitable for application. Finally, stresses, we can look at many different types of stress within the pipe and um, compare them along length and use this data as we see fit. Maybe we want to look at tangential stresses, ID and OD and compare them as abandoned stress, whatever the user wants to do. And again, we can click right click, column settings, and there's a few other options that we can include. Finally, for displaying the depths here, it's um, displayed intervals, so major depths that we are interested in, which is normally shoes or crossover points, etc. But if we wanted to look at just certain boundaries, we can do this. We can select this one, it breaks down the more pertinent points. But if we wanted to display depths of everything or pretty much everything, um, we can do this, and it's gonna, this has got a step change of about five, six feet here. And then we can see all the way down the world or everything that we want to, want to look at. So that is a summary of our stress results. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. Uh, we also have this graphical representation of the tabular data. Um, if the user finds that useful to look at, then they can look at it in a visual format, maybe it's for a presentation or something like that. Um, you can see a few loads here in red fallen below our design factors across here. And I understand many people are new to the world of reliability-based design. So what I will also do is I'll upload a couple of RBD documents to the FTP site. And what we're able to do, I'm just making a note now, and then the user can read a little bit about RBD while they're looking at that part of the screen um, to get some clarity on the situation. However, if anyone needs further details, feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to um, answer any questions that you have. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to thermal analysis and how we include thermal analysis in our designs.